It's time for News 3's Sports Extra, sponsored by Childers Orthodontics, Weeks of West Frankfurt, Southside Lumber, and SIU Credit Union. Now, News 3's Sports Extra. And welcome to Sports Extra. Who's ready for a fun night of high school hoops? We all love bragging rights, and according to Max Preps, we've got a couple of good teams in our area. The online publication has Pinckneyville ranked second and Massac County ranked fourth in Illinois' Class 2A state rankings. Both teams in action tonight. So we start with Pinckneyville. Panthers hosting Anna Jonesboro. And here we go. How about a great play to start the game off? Dre Scott gets a steal, and there he goes, slams it down. Panthers fired up. But how about this ball movement? Devin Kitchen showing patience. Defense comes in. He dishes to a wide open Grant Tanner for the bucket. The Wildcats showing some movement of their own. Juan Valencia, perfect ball to the Marion Farst for two. But defense can make or break a team. Hunter Riggins. Gets the loose ball and there he goes, takes it the distance. He chipped in with nine points and then Dre Scott. He had a good game tonight, scoping out the court. Here he is and finds Dawson Yates. Perfect combo. Panthers start to pull away, but the Wildcats, they're not giving up. Blake Pena times this one, dodging the block. But Pinckneyville would continue to make power plays, taking down AJ 53-37. Hey, Kendra Sheehan has been in Pinckneyville all night. She's got a full recap and to catch up with our winning coach and player. We send it back out to Kendra. Kendra, Panthers, they look pretty good. Hey, Jason, welcome to Pinckneyville. The Panthers are coming off a first place finish at their holiday tournament. So tonight it was all about getting the job done against Anna Jonesboro. Now the Panthers, they're well trained on offense. They're patient with the ball. They're not forcing shots that aren't there. But something in particular that stuck out to me tonight was their defensive game. And that is something that head coach Robert Wagner says is a big focus for his team. We consider ourselves a defensive team. You know, we work extremely hard on making sure that we, uh, you know, play team defense, we help each other, we help the helper, and we guard as well as we can. And I thought we did a good job of staying attached to the assignments tonight, and uh, we've done that throughout the year. It's the number one priority. Uh, you know, our coach says if you can shoot it, if you can play. But he says, but everybody's got to play defense. That's That's been the number one rule since 1948. And so with that rule, I mean, it just makes our team a lot better, and it, make, and it helps our offense too because our defense can translate into our offense. These guys have played a lot of basketball recently and still more to be played as the season continues to ramp up. So it's all about keeping these guys healthy as the season progresses. Reporting from Pigneyville, Kendra Sheehan, News 3 Sports. All right, great job as always. Hey, Joe Hossman, who is from Heron and is Massac County Patriots at Heron. Early first quarter, points were hard to come by. And then Massac County caught fire. Trading keys for three, packs up six. Massac on the break. Great find by Keyes. Fantastic finish by Kyler McIntosh. Lead up to eight. But the Tigers roar back. Luke LaCroix climbs the ladder. Tip in. Cuts the lead to three. Aaron not done. Showing some patience. Four different Tigers get touches. Work it back to Jake Baumgart. Let it fly. Oh, yeah. We've got a two-point ball game. But Massac County, they respond. The El Dorado Holiday Tournament MVP, Jays Mazel. Let's it go, buries the three, but Heron rallies past Massac County, 69-59. All right, Harrisburg at Benton, and here we go. We're going to pick up the action in this one in the second quarter. Bulldogs, they're on the run. Andrew Biddle spots it up from beyond the arc, knocking down the long-range tray. Bulldogs built a 10-point lead. Rangers, though, they respond. Wyatt McClintock keeps his composure. Finishes the lay-in. Benton only trails by five. Later in the second, Reese Johnson starts to take over. Drives the lane, fights through traffic. Tough lay-in, gets a tough fall. All right, Benton only down three. Closing seconds. We're building high drama here. Johnson again and gets that home court rim. Oh, rattles around, gets it to fall before the buzzer at the half. Benton rolls past Harrisburg, 69-53. All right, Christopher at Waltonville early on in the first. Kyle Garver using the screen. Look at that. Executed to perfection. 
Down the lane, gets the bucket to go. Spartans holding a two-point lead, though. Later on, Bearcats finding their rhythm. Bryce Pratt knocking it down. That's good for three. Christopher only down three. But the Spartans have an answer. C.J. Griffith finds Dylan. Bonick down low on the block, finishing strong at the rim. Walton, Waltonville, I should say, would take control early. Jackson Haley, the senior. The tough drive. Oh, look at that. Weezing through traffic. But Christopher upends Waltonville 43-36. Hey, we made our way to Kentucky for some matinee basketball. We ring in the New Year with the Graves County New Year's Bash. Here we go. Marion taking on Callaway County. I was up early. This was a 10.30 a.m. tip-off. Early on, the Wildcats get away with the dangerous cross-court pass. Benson Newsom dialing it in from three. But costly turnovers would become a theme. Callaway County's Caden Mize wins the foot race for two. And then check this out. Oh my goodness, Jackson Connor. That's grand larceny. Frankie Horner rewards the big fella. And what a play. All right, moments later, though, Chandler steals, redeems himself on the turnover. The 6 6 senior can get up. The two handed jam. Callaway up six. But Marion cuts down the turnovers. Get back in the driver's seat. Kevin Cameron with the floater. That was pretty. And then Jonathan Tucker and the Wildcats get by Callaway County 62-55 to advance. Connor Jackson scored 22 points in the process, scored his 1,500 points of his career. What a milestone, and we caught up with him after the game. I didn't even know I was like uh, within the reach of the 1,500, and today we were all worried about just getting a big win uh, this morning as a team. Uh, you know, it feels good. Uh, it just kind of shows how much work I put in and how much work I have to go. So, you know, it's just kind of like a good, like, measuring stick of where I am. All right, with the morning win, Marion advanced to play Paducah Tillman. Wildcats win again, 68-56, advanced to tomorrow's 6 o'clock final. Jackson Connor, 31 points in that win. All right, third game from the New Year's Bash. Host Graves County taking on West Creek out of Tennessee. Early on, Eagles down two, and Seth Thomas. Works his way into the paint, says, hey, I got this. Somehow spins his way into a nice fallback jumper. Ooh. And then this time, Grace County going inside. Cade Babb flexing muscles. But that's not enough. West Creek advances past Graves County 54-47 in OT. All right, staying on the hardwood from high school to college hoops. Big game for SIU tomorrow. Saluki's looking to avoid an 0-2 start in the Missouri Valley Conference. Southern is 5-1 at home. We'll try to feed off that home crowd. Eric McGill should be back tomorrow. He was out Monday with the flu. He's been back practicing with the team. Aaron Cook still dealing with some discomfort in his hand. Earlier today in his press conference, Coach Mullins didn't indicate yes or no if Cook will play. We'll find out tomorrow, but SIU will have their hands full with Illinois State. Redbird scored 56 second-half points in a recent win over Northern Iowa, a team that had only one loss up to that point. We've got to be connected defensively. You know, we made a lot of uh, you know defensive mistakes in the game against Indiana State, uncharacteristic that we haven't done in the past couple games. And you know, we got to clean that up, and we got to be more solid. You know, just in our half-court defense uh, on Saturday. All right, here's another interesting storyline to watch. SIU assistant Brendan Mullins was a coach at Illinois State prior to coming to SIU. Spent two seasons on. Dan Muller's staff at Illinois State, 2017 through 2019. Brendan was an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator. He has a ton of respect for Coach Muller and, and all the players there. So I'm sure uh, it's you know a little mixed emotions at the beginning, but you know he's a Saluki. He wants to win <laughs> as bad as I do, uh, as bad as our players do. Um, you know, so he's you know he's a, as competitive as anyone. So I think he's looking forward to the game. So that's all the time we have. SIU women, a 67-50 win, one winner over Valparaiso. That's your Sports Extra. That's all the time we have. Have a great night, everyone, and tune in tomorrow as Kendra has more sports for you.